Hey guys, welcome back to another Sorted George Garage with me, Julian. Um, you've had a few videos out already with Miss Daisy. I actually started this particular video about four months ago, uh, but we've had one or two things go wrong, etc. Um, and it's actually escalated, it's gone from bad to worse. <laughs> what started off as a basic service uh yeah it's now ended up with uh, a hole in the engine bay so <laughs> i think this one now is going to be a series of a couple of videos coming up and you'll see why uh when you watch this video um and sarah bless her heart she's actually bought me a rather an apt sign to go with this so uh yeah that's what it's turning into at the moment so right Let's crack on with this video. Here we go. <laughs> uh, time to give Miss Daisy a well-deserved service. Right, first things first. Let's give this an oil change. I'll tell you what, they're enough. A, a dent in this sump. Here we go. Oh, let's see what this is like. I want to smell the oil, see what she's like, whether or not the uh, uh, lift pump has been leaking into the leaking into the oil. Don't drop it in there, for God's sake. There she is. No, nope, that's good. Maybe a tad. Either that or it's where uh, I've been trying to get this one going. And we've had a bit of bore wash going on perhaps. But this one's good. Right, let's let that drain. As you do, let's go and clean up this nut. Right, that's that done. Uh, oil filter next, here we go. Spin, here we go. Oh, there she goes. That makes a change. They normally make a right mess. And there we go, new oil filter on. I've put the uh, the date and the mileage on there. Uh, that's the 10th of January 10, 23, uh, 70,651 miles. Reason for that is obviously it gives you a date and the mileage of when the oil filter was done. It just helps you sort of keep track of it, you know what I mean? So, right, sort of George, let's crack on up here. Lots of new parts. I suppose I better put some oil in it before I forget. I've got about four litres of 2050 I'm putting in here at the moment. There's a there's a baffle uh, just on the uh, valve cover, just at the bottom of this funnel. So I've got to pour it in slow. But we've got some nice treacle going in, so that's all right. Just like the old golden syrup. Look at that. Right, I'll let that sit. Let the old funnel drain down. Sort of George, banging mush. Right, next job, fuel pump. Good thing with uh, the 66, with all the different sort of bracketry that you used to get like over the years, this particular one, I've got a nice big gap down here to be able to see what I'm doing and obviously I can get to, uh, get to the actual fuel pump down underneath. Right, let me just change that out. Here we go. Right, that's that job, job. New lift pump in, new filter, new hoses, uh, fuel hoses. What I've done is uh, I've had to loop the fuel hose around because last, what like on uh, Old Blue, what they'd done when they put a new uh, fuel hose in, it ended up rubbing against the alternator belt and almost went through and I almost had fuel going everywhere. So to prevent that, I've looped it around uh, nice tidy job and also we've got a new uh, fuel hose coming from the tank up to the lift pump as well so uh, that's that job job right next job here we go master cylinder right now this is a single pot master cylinder okay it's not a dual so you've only got the one uh, brake pipe coming out this one is uh, obviously closed off um, 
yeah, so that will go down to the uh, distribution block down there. Um, it's the older system, so you've not got uh, a separate pot for the fronts and the rears. So, uh, right, yeah, let's uh, let's just change this over. Here we go. Tell you what, let's have a giggle first and see what's in here. This is a 7 sixteenths bolt on the top. This has obviously not been off for quite a few years. So let's have a giggle and see what we got in, shall we? Got inside. Let's have a look, let's take that out. Let's see what's inside. Oh, if it'll come off. Oh, I might need a bit of persuasion on that one. Hang on. If I had a hammer. There you go. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Oh, okay. That's different. I was expecting that to be uh, a lot worse than that. Right, what we got here, obviously, is uh, two nuts, two, what do you call it? Um, one is a 9 sixteenths, and the other one is, where are we, 7 sixteenths. There you go. So just crack that off. I have actually WD faulted all of these uh, with some penetrate fluid, like I say, so at least I know that they are gonna come off nice and easy. Well, hopefully, anyway, it looks like they are, so that's good. All right, you get on there again, come on. Thank you. Just wanna make sure that, uh, obviously that's gonna twist off of the pipe and not twist the pipe. So, there you go, that's coming off nice. Don't think I need to have that on there anymore. Right, I think that's about it. There you go, that's off. Out you come. There you go. Salty George, right, you're out of the way, that'll do. Right, these four nuts holding the master cylinder onto the uh, booster, they are half inch. Job, job. Right, you can just come straight off. And that's what she's like inside, that's good. There's no leaks on the rubber or anything like that. Just a bit of muck. That's about it. Sorted, George. Looks like paint. <laughs> right, I'll give that a quick clean up and then uh, we'll put the other one on. Here we go. Right, sorted, George. There it is done. Just giving it a wire brush off and uh, a quick coat of paint just so that it's like aesthetically pleasing as you do. Uh, you can see a few witness marks here where the old master cylinder was. Uh, I took out the... Uh, brake booster hose uh, that comes off of the uh, inlet manifold and I also took out the rubber the rubber's in really good condition so I'm pleased about that so that's tidied that up that looks nice um, all we got to do now is um, put on the master cylinder sort of George here we go <laughs> right here we go you can slide on in there just like so let's have some Nuts on, as you do. Lovely. So, George, that's that done. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't actually bench bled this master cylinder. It's because this particular one, you do not bench bleed. You bleed it when it's on the car whether it's got something to do with the fact that it's only a single pot i don't know but that's what the instruction says you do not bench bleed it because you can damage the actual uh master cylinder itself so that's what it says that's what i'm going to do sort of george right pull that off it'll dust cap that can go that's it you'll sit there lovely that's good there you go, right, just relax that, that's good. Right, 
you can go in. Lovely, there you go. That's nice and tight. Job, job. Here we go. Right, I've just put a bit of fluid in there. Uh, just come to the top of where that screws into. Literally, it's just up to the top edge. I'm just going to press the uh, brake pedal a couple of times. As you've just seen, there was another bubble come out of there. Just give it a go, see if anything comes out. I'm only moving it about five or six mil, not a lot. Back up again. Back down. Back up again. Look at that. And that's it, that's how you do it. That's how you bleed one of these master cylinders. Nice and gentle. See, look, the last little bit of bubbles coming out. Sort of George. Right, and that's that all done. Job, job, master cylinder has been bled. Uh, Sarah came out and gave me a hand to do all four corners. Uh, so the brakes are all up together, that's good. If you haven't seen the brakes being done uh, on Miss Daisy, you can check out this cheeky little link here in your top right hand corner and go and watch that. Uh, right, let's um, let's crack on with something else. Here we go. Hmm. Right, fast forward a few weeks. Uh, I have been doing other bits and bobs on the car. Um, I've got like new battery cables and new terminals in. I also put in a new voltage regulator. Um, you've had a few videos out as well, like the, the transmission and the seal, etc., and the brakes. Um, I've also got a new out about that. Um, but one of the reasons why I stopped on the service was because this little baby here was leaking. This was a brand new fuel pump, brand new lift pump. Uh, and it was leaking around here. And I've deliberately sort of like not cleaned that up so that you can see. And also you might be able to see it there. So brand new lift pump where the fuel was coming out. That's where it was leaking. So and obviously that's no good. So I had to uh, get another one off of that rock place uh, and I've got to send that back now because they want it sent back. Not a problem, I'll get a refund. I ain't worried about that. Uh, one or two other bits and bobs I've been doing. I've been giving it a clean. You'll see that in the, another video. Right. Um, also what I've done down here, obviously I've put the new one in, but also down with the actual fuel hose, what I'd done, I wasn't keen on the way that it was rubbing on the actual... Uh, outlet so what I've done I've just put another bit of hose wrapped around it wrapped around the actual fuel hose itself so that can rub as much as it likes because it's actually going to rub on the outer um, extra bit of hose rather than the actual hose itself so right let's get on with points condenser setting up the dwell Dizzy cat rower, you name it. Right, here we go. Bang in. Right, sorted, George. I've put the new leads, etc. on uh, first. I've done that before I warmed up the vehicle so that uh, I'm not messing about with a hot manifold. I've put on a new cap. I haven't done the button yet. Um, yeah, have a look at this. The old cap. That was out for some corroded terminals, eh? Look at the state of that lot in there. She's still round, all right, but yeah. And in the top, obviously that one's for the coil. But look at this lot here. Wow. Some corrosion in there. No wonder before I had a weak spark. But hey, there you go. Right. So with George. So that's done. There's a new one in there. Um, so I'm going to warm her up now. Uh, I want to do, obviously, because I rebuilt the carb. So uh, I want to do the mixture screws on that lot. And then obviously once she's uh, cold, I can then do the choke. Uh, but I want to do the timing, etc. And obviously, like I say, I want to do the points and condenser. Do the dwell. Here we go, banging. <laughs> sort of noise have a listen again sounds like a like a soft knock doesn't it 
but or well, that's what it sounds like on camera but in real life it's more of a we it's like a suction sound um when she warmed up and was on tick over uh I, ju I just went into the cab obviously like to turn it off uh and i noticed that the oil light was on i gave it a rev oil light went out um but obviously you still got that sound i can i can rev this car or i can rev the engine like you know give it a good rev the crap out of it if you like um but there's no knock it's not like a big end knock or a cam or, or something like that you know what i mean it's more of a suction sound it's really weird um i'm wondering because it's been stood for like you know hasn't been started for like 15 years until obviously i've done the first start on it i'm wondering if it's um i noticed uh, let me change it a bit right when i I didn't notice it when I put the first fuel pump on, but I did notice it when I put the second fuel pump on, where obviously the arm goes in for the, the cam arm to do the, um, the what's name on the diaphragm. I noticed around there it was a bit dirty, you know, like dried oil up against the, um, uh, like the inside of the block or inside of the engine as it were, um, which obviously I'm not too happy about. Uh, I didn't notice it first time and I'm wondering if all that lot now with use of me, you know, like starting it, etc, etc. I'm wondering if things have started to flake off, go down into the bottom of the oil pan and the oil pickup is blocked. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm worried about. Um, I don't like the idea of low oil pressure on tick over. Is it the oil pump that's you know, is it the oil pump that's that's going out? I don't know. Um, I think it's best if we took the engine out uh, and had a look inside. Just, you know what I mean? The, um, the sump gasket is a little bit wet as well. And you can't really, you can get the sump off, but it's a nightmare in here uh, in a seat body. So it's best if you take the engine out. So we can kill two birds with one stone doing that. Uh, yeah, I'm not too keen on that low oil pressure. Don't know whether it's the pickup that's blocked or whether it's the oil pump that's going out. I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. So that's the next job. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> right, so we're starting off up underneath. Uh, I've already done the exhaust bolts. Uh, I've left that one in, as you can see on the other side there. I've left that one in. I've undone the other two, as you can see, that's done. Now, when it comes to exhaust bolts, heat is your friend. Trust me, heat is your friend. Oh, mate, they took me about an hour to get them off. Now, one of the things up under here I don't like, as you can see, the sump gasket is absolutely wet through and it's like it on both sides uh, we got a little bit up there by the spark plugs but i think what that is is uh, when i first got this running um i put atf i put uh, automatic transmission fluid down in all of the bores just so it it had some uh, um, you know oil uh, to help lubricate the bores whilst the pistons were going up and down before the oil got around the engine. Um, so I think what that is, is obviously where it spat it out. Uh, but like I say, this sump gasket is uh, having a nice weep and it's like it all the way around. I don't like that. So this is one of the reasons why uh, we've taken the engine out. Uh, that way then obviously we can have a look inside, uh, clean it all out reseat the valves put a new air gasket on etc etc clean up the engine paint it clean out the engine bay put it all back in right next i'm going to take out the uh, starter motor and then i'm going to undo the uh, bell housing bolts for the transmission and I'm going to take off the engine mounts take out the bolts for the engine mounts so there might be one or two other little knickknacks. Obviously, I've got to undo the um, uh, the wiring to the starter motor. Uh, but it shouldn't be too bad. Once that's done, then I can put this back down on the floor. Uh, oh, that's a blunt. Yeah, while you're underneath here, 
you can take out the uh, transmission cooler lines as well. Don't forget to do them. So, right. Let me crack on and I'll come back when I've done all that lot. Sort of, George. See you in a bit. <laughs> right, so we've got the starter motor out and also we've got out the bolts for the engine mounts. They're done. Uh, right, let me just slide you up in there. I've already taken out the flex plate. Now, what I want to show you here, let me get a good camera angle. There you go. Right, the flex plate to torque converter, okay, the flex plate isn't 100% square deliberately, so that it goes back one way. Uh, I'm not saying that this one's going to be the same, but I've had it in the past with other 440s. So what I'm going to do, I've got a silver um, paint pen. I'm just going to put a mark on the flex plate and also at the back here on the torque converter. That way then we can align that up properly when we come to install it. Otherwise you get a bolt in, then you get another bolt in. Then when you go around to the third one, it don't line up. So, yeah, I've had that in the past. Um, right, so I'm going to take out the flex plate and then I'm going to do the uh, bell housing transmission to engine. Uh, and then, oh yeah, do the uh, transmission lines on the radiator. And then I can put this back down on the floor and start on the top end. Right, sort of, George, here we go. <laughs> right. Right, about six hours later, I kind of got carried away. <laughs> Flex plate bolts are out. What I meant earlier was I took out the flex plate cover. I'd already removed that. That's why you can see the flex plate and the bolts. Right, so I've removed the bolts. Uh, all I've got is the top two on the transmission. Uh, yeah, I got a bit carried away yes, and I didn't I didn't film. Sorry about that. Uh, right, we've got a bit of a bare engine bay. <laughs> right, power steering pump is out. Obviously, the lines are off. Radiator is out. Transmission lines are obviously disconnected. Uh, we've got the water hoses disconnected. All the uh, uh, spark plug leads, they've gone, so is the distributor cap. Um, taken off all of the um, uh, wiring. Let me put the light on, hang on a minute. Better. I have been tagging up anything and everything, transmission connection there, all this lot for the alternator, etc., etc. temperature, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think I've got it all. Uh, all I've got to do, like I say, is the two bell housing bolts at the back there. I'm going to have to get that from the top. I've taken out the um, vacuum canister as well. Uh, yeah, sorted. Fuel line's been disconnected. Um, yeah, we ain't got much to go. And then uh, we can lift her out. Sorted, George. Let me take out the two but there's some bolts at the top here. Uh, and I think we should be good to go. Oh, I've got to take out that uh, aircon pump as well. That's rather a bit of a monstrosity. Unfortunately, you I mean, the aircon don't work on this and, and whatever. So I've removed all of the uh, aircon lines, etc. There's no point in having it. Same as the uh, aircon radiator that was down here. No point in having it. It don't work. Unfortunately, you can't get a pulley... Uh, as like a aircon delete you got to change all of the pulleys etc and brackets um, as if it's a non aircon car uh, that's a bit of a pain in the bum so I'm leaving the aircon pump on but obviously I've got to take it off at the moment so I've got a bolt there or a nut uh, I should leave that bracket on the pump I think there's two here I think there's one there and then that one there, so, and then that air comp pump should come off. So then we're just left with the basic engine. Uh, I should take off the carb because I've got this here. I don't want that digging in my chest when I'm going down the back, so I should take that off. Uh, yeah, right. Um, I'll do that, and then what I do, I get set up with the uh, 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 engine crane, engine hoist, um, and I'll come back then. Sort of, George. See you in a bit. Right. Quick one before I go in. Top bolts are out. Out the bell housing. And everything else is done. Right. Problem is, right, when you're doing this on your own, or I'll tell you what, if you're doing it with somebody else, right, them two top bell housing bolts, somebody can be underneath with extension upon extension upon extension, right? 
and then the guy up on top can be down here and he can be guiding your socket onto the bolt and he can hold it there for you. Obviously, when you're on your own, you can't. Now, they're 9 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths bolts, and what I had to do, I had to do that. Hopefully you can see that, hang on. Turn it around the way, then I know, there you go, right, do that. So that you can get in there, like so. Otherwise, you ain't getting it, you ain't getting it out because this is in the way, then that's in the way. Let's say they're, uh, yeah, nine sixteenths. Absolute nightmare. So you've got to do that to one of your spanners. Right, I'll come back when I've got everything sorted out and uh, we're ready to take it out. Back in a second. Well, it's a second on the video anyway. <laughs> it's in a bit. Guess you forgot to hit record. Let's take you around, shall we? Let's show you. Right, and here she is in all her glory. It's finally out. Now you can see better uh, how wet this sump is. It's like it all the way around. Uh, like I say, this bit up here, I think, was where I was doing the uh, transmission fluid in the borers uh, when I first got her going. I'd say she certainly missed a service or two. Definitely. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, strip this down and uh, give it a clean up. I'm going to stake it down there. But hey, she's out. Look at the state of this round here. This is obviously where the uh, Mouskovich was. I didn't get to that because it was right the way down the back. But hey, I ain't got a clue what this is. I don't know whether it's some sort of old school heat shield or something i don't know i'll take that out i ain't got a clue what that is but uh yeah right around this side you can also see the uh how wet the sump is it also looks like the uh dipstick uh is leaking from there obviously the grommet's gone or you know the uh, o-ring's gone but yeah she's certainly wet so uh yeah, hand up there. Well, wow. it's kicking out some crap. So yeah, it'd be good to tear this down and uh, see what we got inside. Um, oh yeah, yeah, this is what I was gonna show you, hang on. Flex play. Now, what I was referring to about the bolts being out of alignment, I didn't mean it as in, um, you know, like one of them's up here somewhere. What I meant by it was you've got like this distance is shorter or longer than what this distance is, all right? So because obviously tape measures, these ends tend to move, I'll start on two inches, all right? So two inches to the outside edge of that bolt hole, all right? So there's two inches there, and that to the end of the other bolt hole is on 10, so that's eight inches. Oh, wreck the place. So now if we go down this way, top of the bolt hole, that now is on the quarter inch, so that's eight and a quarter. So that's what I was referring to as regards marking up the flex plate. I've marked this corner here, uh, and obviously marking up the um, uh, torque converter, because you'll get a bolt in, and then you'll come around to the next one. You might get that, you might be lucky if you like. Uh, but yeah, you, you end up that you've got that one in and then that should be the next one, but you've got that one there. So that's going to be your next one. So you, you, you've got to start again. So 
That's why I mark up the flex plate and the torque converter. Right, so moving on. Let's, uh, yeah, she's in a bit of a mess, isn't she? Bit of a mess, this one. So I'm glad we've taken this out, I must admit. She dirty, she wants to clean up, and no doubt it'll want to clean up on the inside. Right, engine bay, let's have a look in here. Um, transmission down there looks nice and clean, so I think the uh, front seal of the transmission is good. Uh, when I took off the flex plate cover um, down the bottom there, I did put my hand in there, and she's nice and dry, so, so that's good. Uh, yeah, she's not too bad in here. Um, just wants a good clean up basically. So that's obviously where all the radiator leaked, etc. I've put the gloves on for the uh, transmission cooler pipes. Uh, yeah, it'll be good just to give this old girl a good clean, to be fair, and a paint up. That'll be nice. So the engine bay's done. So anyway, let's put that back in. Thank you very much. Sort with George. So now I've got a bit of a problem. My 440 won't fit on my engine stand. It's too small. I told Chris, and he said, Your 440 won't fit into the in, uh, on your engine stand? That sucks! Yeah, I know, tell me about it. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'll have to get another engine stand. Right, next day, uh, engine stand has been ordered, so that's due to arrive tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm just cleaning up the engine bay. I, I just wanted to, you know, like give it a tidy up. Uh, I was at first contemplating about like painting it, but you know, like painting it black, satin black, whatever else. Um, but what I've done is I've just got some other things here over there. I've got some standard thinners over there. Um, I've just been cleaning it, and that's come out really well, actually. I must admit, I'm quite surprised at that. So, I mean, you can see all the dirt and, and everything else on it. Um, I haven't done this area, but obviously I've done that area. And also on the bulkhead, I've done that little area there. So, um, oh, here as well, look at this. Like from there upwards, I've done that bit. So, yeah, rather than paint it, I think it'll be more in keeping if I just clean it. What I'm going to do, I am going to paint the uh, like the chassis. I should give that a coat of black, satin black or something like that. And just down here, um, just so that it's got something. And obviously clean up the K-member, etc. Um, just to tidy that up when you're looking down in the engine bay. But yeah, I think all this lot here is just a case of giving it a clean. And I mean, if it's going to come out like that, then uh, like I say, it's going to be certainly more in keeping with the car. Um, just to clean it up like I'm going to be cleaning up the outside, you know, I think it will look a lot better. Um, yes, that's what we're doing. So, sort of George, here we go. <laughs>
but you can see obviously the gist of what I'm doing here. I think it's coming up all right actually to be fair uh, it's only a case of getting off a load of the dirt um, I'm gonna call it a day because I've got to go in uh, right I should carry on tomorrow sort of George see you in a bit right sort of George a couple of days later obviously the engine stand now is turned up um, it I got this from a company called SGS this one is a 680 kilo um, engine stand a 440 is about 670 pounds or that is i think it's 303 kilos so this engine stand is going to be ample to take a 440 now what i do like about this as you can see the little sort of spider arms you've got plenty of room you could either go through the two down the bottom there if you like or you can use the two outer screw holes and then the two top screw holes i'm using the top two and the middle two as it were uh, one, two, three, four, rather than three, four, five, six, because a very high percentage of the time, this 440 on the engine stand is going to be in the upright position. What they recommend is that you get this bar sort of level. Uh, yeah, there you go. Right, they get they recommend that you get it level. There's your crank. Right, so they recommend that you get that level with the crank. That way, then it's kind of balanced. But because a lot of the time the heads are going to be on, etc., there's going to be more weight up the top than what there is down the bottom. So I will need that as far up as I can possibly get it. So that's why I'm choosing those four bolt holes. Now, also, what I like about this engine stand, as you can see, obviously it folds up. Uh, so it's like easy storage out of the way, but also you've got this brace as well. I like that idea as well. And uh, if any of the guys in the UK are watching this, that stand is great for a nice big wide V8 like the 440 Mopar. Um, right, I'm going to tighten them down because obviously not, I haven't tightened them down yet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tighten them down and then uh, put it on the stand. So um, bear with me. I'll be back in a sec. Sorted. Uh, the good thing about using uh, the same brand of stuff is it will actually fit uh, in between like the legs of the, uh, the engine crane. So, right. Lovely. They're all tightened down. She's up there. I just wanted to show you as well that, uh, I mean, she's on there. These are loose. I've just left them on as a precaution at the moment, but if I give that a good bounce, then there's not a lot of twang to it. But yeah, great little engine stand. Right, uh, let me just get rid of this engine hoist and uh, I'll be back. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say as well. Do you remember I said about the uh, other lift pump, the old fuel pump, and I can get a refund? <laughs> yeah, right, okay. I can get a refund, but I've got to spend about $56 in shipping to send it back to get a refund of about $12, $14. Who's going to do that? So yeah, I can get a refund, but I've got to pay my own postage because I'm out of the US. Yeah, right. Oh well, never mind. That can go in the bin, can't it? Sort of George. Right, let's crack on.
Right, sorted, George. That's got that cleaned up. Uh, I gave it off camera. Another good old going over. Uh, you can see the uh, 440 and, and what's that? 3152. Not sure if there's another number under there or not. You can see the uh, DeSoto Plymouth Chrysler Dodge logo. Um, yeah, it's cleaned up all right, actually. I must admit, gave it a good old uh, going over. Even sort of like down under there etc etc uh where the distributor comes out or sits whatever uh i want to um i want to give that another sort of sort of clean out before i take the distributor out so i'll pull off the water pump and then i can clean it out before that comes off um i think first port of call is going to be taken off the um exhaust manifolds uh yeah she's come out all right she's clean up you can actually see some, some colour on it now, actually, so that's good. Um, yeah, this is uh, only some of uh, what came off of the engine, because uh, most of it went up the shop vac, to be fair. Um, right, let's, uh, let's tear into it in the next video. What a mess. In the next one, obviously, we'll tear it down, etc., etc., so... Guys, thanks ever so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I really do. Thank you. Um, like, share, hit the subscribe button as well if you wouldn't mind because it would help this channel grow. A big thank you to all those that have already subscribed. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, nip over and check out Chris over at Swede Machine. He's now got his uh, service truck up and running and then he's doing a few other bits and bobs. That's worth watching. Um, I'll see you on the next one. It's Sort of George Garage. Banging.